Hey, what's happening, guys? I don't know if you remember. I barely remember. Back on April 20th of this year, I did a video creating this uh, dual voltage split rail power supply for the STEM kids. And it didn't quite work out exactly as I thought. I had made a couple of mistakes. And uh, today we're going to correct them and do it right. So, the biggest mistake in the whole thing is right here. I don't know how, but I somehow flipped that capacitor around. So, honestly, that should probably take care of our problem. And it is such, such a stupid, simple problem. I can't believe I missed it. So we're updating our changes. I know that's too much for you guys to see there. That should be a little better. So now I think what we must do here is unroute it. And then we're going to have to reroute it. Let me start up my auto router. One moment, if you please. All right, the auto router is running. Yes, I use auto router because I am whatever you want to call me. Cheap, lazy, stupid, whatever. I don't like routing. All right. So, that looks pretty good. Next thing we need to do is uh, uh, we need to generate some PCBs. Right. Save, save, save. Always save. Let's try this again, please. Yes, please. So this video is sponsored by PCB Way. They are the only board house I use. They do great work. Yes, they sponsor me. And yes, I will use them even if they didn't sponsor me. They do good work. It's just that simple. And it's so easy to click on PCB in some quote, quick order your PCB. All you have to do, really, add your Gerber file. Mm, wrong button. There we go, split rail V2. Picture comes up, it's that simple. I want five of them, everything here is standard. They're gonna be red with white. And we come over here, we can check our shipping. DHL is 2365, FedEx is 24, PCB Way Express 1592. Yeah, I'm really curious about the USPS shipping. I am going to try it on this one. 6 to 16 business days? Let's find out. Brings the cost down to 14.67. All right. So, 6 to 16 days, 26. But that's okay. That's not a problem PCB way. That was the US Postal Service. Anyway, the boards are back. And we have changed our routing there, so hopefully everything will be copacetic. All right, I'm going to solder one of these guys up. And while I'm doing that, let's talk about the ICL7660 for just a minute. I think they're pretty cool. All right, so we're taking a look at the data sheet for the ICL7660, also known as the MAX1044. And these are CMOS switch capacitor voltage regulators invert the blah 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 basically it's a charge pump to give you negative voltage they work really nice so we can take a look at this and we have a supply voltage which is incredible 1.5 to 10 volts so that is perfect for using with op amps which is what i use it for 98 percent efficiency invert double you can do all sorts of things with this and we have a boost pin, but we're not going to talk about any of that. No external diode required. And then here's our circuit. And here is where I had made the mistake, because I had that one flipped around. Pretty simple. Got some specs on it here. Supply currents. Supply voltage, output resistance. 
is our power efficiency. We're looking at a minimum of 95% efficiency, which is plenty. I mean, it, it's just fine. Come down here. You can pause this or anything. I'll put a link to this data sheet down below so you can see it. Here's I want to get through the pin names. We have the frequency boost we're not using. Okay. Now, that's also not connection. So we have our connection between cap plus and cap minus here. That's right there. And we used a uh, 10 microfarad capacitor for that in our setup. Pin 3 is ground, self-explanatory. Then pin 5 over here is our voltage out. There is our capacitor going to ground. And we're not using the oscillator, as I said. And then we have a pin 8, which is our VCC. There you go. Pretty simple. But it works great. It's an easy chip. It is an inexpensive chip. If you're working with op amps, I highly recommend it. All right, so we got one ready to roll now. And it is hooked up to the power supply. They were putting five volts into it. I'm gonna just bump that up a little bit. Give this thing a little bit of overhead. There we go, put it on 6.1 volts. So let's check what we got going on here. Make sure we got the voltage we're looking for. Let me get these mini clips off here. I keep them on here all the time because if I don't, I will lose them. How do I know that? Well, because I've done it multiple times. All right, so we're just checking our voltage there. 6.13, good. All right, let's get this guy in here. And see positive oh, that's backwards <laughs> positive to ground 6.13 ground to negative why'd you do that probably because I hadn't used it in a while huh Still getting a little bit of a probably because there's no load on it. It's uh yeah, I don't even know. I don't know what's going on with it. It's still not perfect, but it's working because when I did this like a few minutes ago, everything was just right. See there's our input voltage. Our output voltage. I'm getting like 4.5, but why am I losing? Why am I losing a volt? Any ideas? Because I'm at a loss now. So, and the thing is, I've made this circuit many times. What am I missing? What am I missing? <laughs> All right, guys. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share. Don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to our sponsors, PCB Way. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. I'm going to go walk the dog or something. Peace. Uh, behold Dogly in all of her glory. A belly full of chicken. Shin bone next to her head for chewing. Napping in the sunshine.